Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in hadith in Qudsi, I am as my servant considers me or thinks of me or expects of me. If it is good, then good. If it is evil, then evil. If he expects that which is good from me, then he will receive that which is good. It is better for him. And if he expects that which is not good or shar, evil, from me, then he will receive that which is not good. So there's a principle in Islam, expect that which is good if you are a believer, if you are sincere, and you will find it. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, Make that which you expect from Allah to be that which is good. Because the mercy of Allah is extended to anyone who believes and repents, asks for forgiveness. قَالَ ابْنُ مَسْعُودِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ I swear by the one besides whom there is no other God. There is not a servant of Allah, a sincere good servant of Allah, somebody who is sincere in his belief and sincere in his effort to obey Allah. There is not a servant of Allah who expects the good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that Allah will give it to him. He will give that good to him, he who expects that which is good. And so when somebody falls ill, for example, we say to them, Tuhur, insha'Allah. Everything that happens to a believer can be good because the believer is a believer. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, Strange or unique or amazing is the condition of a believer because all of his matters are good for him. And that is not applicable to anyone except he who is a believer. So if good comes to the believer, then he thanks Allah. He's not puffed up with pride. He doesn't forget about his obligation to Allah. He stays obedient to Allah and he's rewarded for it. And if something bad happens to him, no matter what he suffers, he still believes in Allah. He still maintains the hope in the good of Allah. And again, he is blessed and rewarded for it. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَالْ فِي حَدِيثٍ قُدْسِي O son of Adam, if you were to come to me with a world full of sins, and then you met me on the day of judgment, having ascribed no partner unto me, then I would come to you with a world full of maghfirah, forgiveness. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those who worship Allah sincerely and not ascribe any partners to him. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ wa ta'ala فِي حَدِيثٍ قُدْسِي O son of Adam, if your sins were to amass all the way up to the sky and then you were to ask me for forgiveness, I would forgive you and I would not mind at all. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. al ghafur rahim And what does Allah do by punishing us? What does Allah benefit by punishing us? As he says in the Quran, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ What would Allah do? What does Allah benefit by punishing you if you are thankful to Him and you believe in Him? So expect that which is good. And so, then we ask ourselves, what is that abd that is deserving to expect that which is good from Allah? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, call upon Allah, make dua to Allah, and you have the certainty that He will answer. But we have to remember that there are three different ways in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer someone's dua. Either you will receive that which you called upon Allah for in the dunya, and you will see it, you will receive it. Or by your dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove from you or protect you from something which is harmful to you. And as we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it may be that you dislike something that happens to you, that it's actually better for you. And it may be that you like or want something for yourself, which is actually not good for you. Wallahu ya'alam wa antum la ta'alamun. It is Allah who always knows and we are in the situation where we really never know ourselves. Or the third way of answering the dua is that the servant of Allah will receive the blessing and the reward for making that dua on the day of judgment. And guess what, my brothers and sisters? On the day of judgment, 
you will see, you will wish that none of your dua that you had made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had been answered for you in the dunya. You will wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had saved it all for you on that day of judgment. And so, is it just anyone who has the right to expect that which is good from Allah? There are certain conditions. Number one, of course, is ascribing no partners unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. And so the one who is sincere will make all the efforts that he or she can in obeying Allah. So this is the servant of Allah who has the right to expect the good from Allah. But what if you fall short? Well, certainly we all fall short, yes? Qala Rasul, every one of the sons of Adam or the daughters of Adam uh, make mistakes, they make sins. And the best of them are those who turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the principle in Islam is, as the Quran says, fear Allah or guard yourselves against the displeasure of Allah to the degree that you personally are able to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fills in the rest. You may be very sincere, you may fall flat on your face a thousand times, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you are sincere, that you ascribe no partner to him, that you are making the best effort that you are able to do, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it. So what's the ruling then for someone who makes tawbah, turning to Allah and asking for forgiveness, and having the intention in his or her heart never to commit that sin again, and then the very next day they fall into the sin again. What is the ruling on that tawbah? Well, that tawbah is accepted by Allah because the one who made the tawbah fulfilled the conditions of the tawbah and was sincere in his repentance. The Prophet ﷺ said, the heart or the essence of tawbah is nadam, regret, feeling bad for the sin that you made. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts that tawbah. And then the next day, if that servant of Allah falls into the very same sin, then upon him is to make tawbah again and again and again and again. And so there's a saying, we say, Allah does not make a servant of his sad, except that he's going to make him happy. And Allah does not take something away from his servant except that he's going to give him and Allah does not test a servant with hardship except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him waqala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if Allah loves a servant then he tests that servant with hardship in the dunya and so many people they forget to think the good or expect the good uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they are beset with tragedies, difficulties. One has an illness or an injury or loses his job or something bad happens to his family, a loss of wealth or a loss of success. And so one may fall into despair, especially if one is making dua to Allah continuously for a very long time and does not see any release, does not see any relief from that difficulty. So one may think Allah doesn't accept my prayer. One may think maybe Allah is displeased with me, maybe Allah is ignoring me. And this is absolutely the wrong conclusion to come to. Because if Allah loves a servant, he tests him with hardship. Look at the prophets of Allah, how they were tested with hardships. The greatest messenger that Allah sent to mankind, how he spent his last days with a terrible illness, a terrible headache, and he died from that, in that condition. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us in the dunya in order to purify us and raise us by degrees to the level that he wishes us to be on the day of judgment. You desire the life of this world, it's human nature, yes? Mankind was created weak, mankind was created hasty, he wants his good right now. And Allah wants that which is coming, the real life. And so whatever besets a believer, then he or she knows that this is for his or her purification and the raising of his status, the raising of his status by degrees in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that his reward will be great on the day of judgment. This is how you should look at every problem that comes to you. And so if Allah besets you with difficulties and you're a sincere believer, then know that Allah loves you. And if Allah besets you with more and more difficulties, and you're a sincere believer, then know that Allah loves you more 
and more. It doesn't mean that you will not suffer from that which comes to you. We look at the prophets like Yaqub, for example, when he lost his son, Yusuf. He suffered greatly. He suffered so much that he became blind. But he continued in his sabr. Fasabrun jamil was his response. And he said to his sons, I know from Allah that which you do not know. And so expect the good and be of those humble servants of Allah. And yet, even the humble servants of Allah, those who are making tawheed and those who are tr striving sincerely, the best that they are personally able to do, even those humble servants of Allah can never sit back and assume that they are okay. Nobody feels safe from the plan of Allah except the people who are losers. Yes, Allah says, say to my servants, those who have oppressed their souls with wrongdoing, do not despair in the mercy of Allah. Allah forgives all the sins altogether. And yet, a believing servant of Allah, his heart will never be only comfortable and confident, not assuming, not thinking that he would be punished. No, the heart of a believer is always going back and forth between two things between the hope in the mercy and forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fear of Allah's displeasure. That is the cold, that is the heart which is alive. That is the believing heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never swears by anything in the Quran except that it is something great and something positive. And so Allah says, Allah swears by the day of standing, which is the day of judgment, and Allah swears by the self-reproaching soul, and nafs al-lawama, the self-critical, the self-blaming soul. And so this is what a believer does. He lives his life always watching what he does and what he says, and always looking for a mistake, and always fearing that he may have made a mistake. And even when the believer does a good deed, he fears that it will not be accepted from Allah. One of the descriptions of the believers in the Quran, those who give what they give, whether they're offering salah or charity or reciting of the Quran or fasting or striving in the way of Allah, those who give what they give for the sake of Allah and their hearts are trembling because they know that they are returning to their Lord. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم من سائر الذنوب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم